Before you submit a cosmetic product for a CPSR, it's necessary to have an idea of the shelf life and to have performed a stability test. Um, you can do this yourself or you can have a lab perform the test for you. Uh, if your product is aqueous and being sent to a lab for challenge testing, um, it may be convenient for you to simply send them more samples so that they can perform the stability test as well. If you choose to do stability testing yourself at home because you're only testing uh, anhydrous products, um, then you can do it one of two ways. You can either observe the product uh, for 12 months at room temperature or you can perform the freeze-thaw stability test. I'd actually opt for both if possible, but definitely, if not sending to a lab, perform the freeze-thaw test. Um, the freeze-thaw stability test was in designed to ensure that products remain stable at drastic and sudden temperature changes. Um, this is because during transit in different parts of the country and the world, the storage temperatures and weather can change, meaning that during its shipping journey, a product can be exposed to many fluctuating temperatures. This can affect the product, obviously. Um, this test is designed to check if it does, uh, does affect it and to what degree. It was advised uh, that, to, that if performing this test at home, then a cycle um, like this should be sufficient. Um, first, retain a sample of your product at room temperature as your control sample. Just put that on a shelf in your, your lab or, or workroom. Then freeze three or more of your products in the finished container or packaging for 24 hours. When 24 hours is was up, remove from the freezer and leave at room temperature to thaw for 24 hours. Repeat this three times and note changes in color, smell, texture, and pH if it's, uh, if it's an aqueous product and do this each time. If there's no change on the final 24 hour thaw, then you can assume that your product is stable for a maximum of six months shelf life. I will say here, because I know you're asked, doing this twice will not give you a shelf life of 12 months. Um, to achieve this, you'll either need to observe it for 12 months in real time or submit it to a lab for an accelerated test. Um, an accelerated test normally takes three to four months, but obviously it does come with a price tag. Um, however, if you read journals on the three freeze-thaw method, uh, they suggest an additional step. The reason that it's not suggested to small cosmetic businesses is that because it's often impractical to be able to heat the product um, for that long and for, because it's a safety concern. Um, this is a benefit of sending your product to a lab as they can do this safely. Um, the process they would do is thus. Um, they retain a sample of your product at room temperature as a control sample, freeze three or more of your products in the finished container packaging for 24 hours, remove from the freezer and leave at room temperature to thaw for 24 hours. Then they would put samples in an oven at over 50 degrees C for 24 hours, remove the samples and allow to come back to room temperature. That would be repeated three times and note changes as stated above. As you can see, putting a product likely in a plastic container in an oven for, for over 24 hours is not only unsafe in a home or a small business premises environment, but also expensive to keep your oven on for that length of time, especially when repeating it three times. Um, I'd advise to stick with a simple freeze-thaw method, as I've been told by a lab that this is acceptable. If you want a shelf life of more than six months, then either observe your product at room temperature for 12 months in addition to the freeze-thaw or send samples to a lab to do the accelerated testing. Accelerated testing usually takes around three months for a 12-month shelf life, assuming that the product is stable. If you notice any changes, draw yourself up a table a bit like the one in the blog which I've linked below. Um, record your data for your control sample and then each time your product has finished one of these freeze-thaw cycles, um, you record that data. It may not have changed at all or it may have changed just slightly. If you notice any significant changes after the first and second cycles, then I would advise revisiting your formula and looking at what may have caused those changes. For example, if an anhydrous product smells a bit off, did you remember to add an antioxidant? Has the colour or texture changed? Did you check if any of your ingredients were unstable at certain temperatures? You want to ensure that your product is safe for use, so remember your CPSR assessment only checks that your recipe 
and any con and for any contraindications. Uh, they do not sample the product unless challenge testing, so you must ensure your stability testing is truthful and accurate. Um, whatever stability testing you do, always keep a sample of the batch with the number and date stored at your lab. It's a good to observe samples of everything you make to ensure that they are performing as expected. Um, but doing this, you can notice any changes in batches as they happen. Uh, they may be down to an ingredient and a manufacturing error or some, something else. Um, the safety of your customers is paramount. Finally, if you're making products containing water, aqueous products, um, then they will be needed uh, at a lab for challenge testing. Um, this isn't cheap, um, which is why we mostly concentrate on anhydrous products for the UK on our channel so that you don't have to go through this procedure. Um, but if you do, then I recommend ceway.eu, linked below. Um, they offer all of these services at a very reasonable price and they're also very helpful. Um, and that's all for our stability testing video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want more information or want to see the recipe for this uh, multi-chrome pressed eyeshadow, then go check out our Patreon. Again, link below. Thanks for watching.